I'm Sherry Cabral. Uh, I work for Mozilla, and I wanted to show you how we um, use Puppet to configure our MySQL instances. And apparently, I can't open a file. Um, and I'll make this a little bigger for you guys. How's that? Um, so uh, I'm going to get a laser pointer because it's right here. Um, and you can use this whether you're using Puppet or Chef or whatever. This is just an example. Um, so here's an example from our actual Puppet server. This is all copied and pasted, right? So we have a class called MySQL to server. This is for MySQL servers. Um, and it happens to be the second one we did, because the first one we did um, was a pile of steaming, not good stuff. So we, uh, we rewrote it. Um, and so we have clusters undefined. I'll tell you what these are. So you see this light gray box? We have clusters undefined and master is true. Well, what does that mean? You know, you can say, okay, it's a master. Well, what does that mean? What does cluster mean? So what ends up happening is over here, and this is actually in the, uh, the MySQL2 settings class, which this actually includes over here. Um, so it actually, you know, gets put in here. Server type, if it's master, then um, there'll, there'll be a string called master in the server type. So if, if, um, if master is set, then server type gets set to master. Otherwise, it gets set to, if it's false, it gets set to slave. And if the cluster is undefined, the message of the day, right, a string called MOTD anyway, is called this is a standalone blank MySQL server. Right? So if you don't have a cluster defined, you can say this is a standalone um, you know, slave MySQL server. This is a standalone master MySQL server. Otherwise, this is a server type MySQL server for cluster. So for example, we have, have add-ons for, for Firefox, right? So we've got a database called add-ons. So it might say this is, a, this is a master MySQL server for add-ons. And then um, this actually changes the message today. Um, so it's actually pretty cool. And you can do stuff like when we fail over a slave, fail over a master to a slave, we actually change it to puppet. And then when an SRE or someone on call logs in, they can see, oh, it's a, it's a slave server. So they don't have to worry about, is this add-ons one or add-ons two or add-ons seven? They just look at the message of the day. Um, so what are some other things, uh, you know, buffer pool size, so, so let's go to the secondary box, actually, or actually, let's keep going here. Collect D MySQL plugin is true, that's actually down here. So if Collect D MySQL plugin, which we have on by default because we want to be collecting data by default, but we figured if it doesn't work, right, then we can turn it off if we need to. So include, uh, so if you have that, include Collect D, realize the Collect D plugin for MySQL, because we have a plugin that's defined elsewhere, and run this MySQL grant. So now we have a grant, and it just says, okay, so for the collect user grant, you have a username and password, which is stored in Hira, which is a, a way to not have your passwords in your puppet modules. Um, database is star, table is star, privilege is this. So it just basically does grant replication client on star dot star to username, you know, to, to username at host, which here is local host, uh, identified by password. So it's very simple interface into the MySQL grant thing, um, but we have it there. So that's another, you know, another class we have MySQL to grant. But you can obviously, it's very powerful, right? Because if you have you know, some kind of monitoring system, um, you stick it there. So, um, so how do we figure out what package we want on the system? Well, here we have a package type. And I'll actually show you the configuration for a server on the next slide, because I do have two slides. Um, so your package type here. So if it's a Maria DB55 package, then your package type is Maria DB55. Very simple. Um, once you have it, it does stuff like this. And it will basically end up installing the proper packages. So let's go to the next page. Let me see if I can figure out how to do that. There we go. All right. So here's a template, a .er, my.cnf.erb, for the my.cnf file. And you can see we start normally, MySQLD, the data directory is relevant MySQL. We haven't changed that. That's global across our thing. We could make it a variable if we want to. We haven't. So I figured I'd show this to you. Um, so then you have this. So if master, remember that master variable? If master is not true, and a variable called master master is also not true, uh, then uh, put read only in there, because it's a slave. And we want it to have the read-only thing, OK? If you have replicate while do table, so this would be an array. Um, and so if you have this defined, right, if it's, if it's not undefined, then for each value, say replicate while do table equals value. So it'll say replicate while do, do table equals, like down here, here's an actual thing, MySQL per Kona. So it'll say replicate while do table equals MySQL, replicate while do table equals per Kona. So it actually gets that out for you. Then we've got some smart stuff going on here. Now, enodb buffer pool size is something you probably want to set for every one of your servers. Um, otherwise, the default is 256 megabytes, and that never helps anyone. So here we've got, if you've defined it, set it to what you've defined it to. Otherwise, set it to uh, whatever this is, to some percentage of uh, half of your memory, right, in megabytes. So you know that's a pretty good default if you haven't figured something out yet. And in the last 10 seconds, this here is actually a one definition cake coming from it. So there's there's more things in there like max connections, which I haven't shown you here. Um, but basically, that's uh, that's what our configuration looks like. Bye.